Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. Today we're joined by Luke Nolan of the Ireland Under 17s and St. Patrick's Athletics Under 19s. He's on to talk to us about his recent trip with Ireland on the Under 17s European Championship Tour. So basically, first off, how was the experience of travelling to Croatia? Yeah, of course, it was brilliant. There's nothing better than playing for your country, you know what I mean? So overall, I enjoyed it. Yeah, great experience. Yeah, and um, that first game against Serbia, obviously the one all draw. Um, really tough game. What was the buzz like when you were walking out onto the pitch? Yeah, it was it was amazing. Like, yeah. I've played what, for Ireland in friendlies and that, but that feeling of competitiveness just came out on us and it was really good. And As I just said, there's nothing better than playing for your country at all. And the pride walking yeah, out. Yeah. yeah, unbelievable. And then your parents and the fans and the crowd cheering yeah. you on and being on the telly, of course. Yeah. It's just yeah. amazing. It was all over your sport now as well. Yeah. yeah. Exactly, and in that, like, in that game as well, um, you had a tough enough first half against their fullback and the left winger. What happened at half time to kind of change things around where you were pretty dominant in the second half against them? Yeah, you know, I was, I was a bit nervous starting off, and yeah. their fullback liked the bomb on, you know, and I, thought, I felt I could have communicated with the, the opposite winger. But in the second half, the gaffer just said, let me see you. Just communicate more with the winger, and yeah. I nailed in the second half, and I felt yeah. we'd done really well. Yeah, you just were, I think you were unlucky not to win that one, actually, in the second half. And yeah. Probably the better team in the second half, especially. Of course. Um, a game you definitely weren't the better team in was the uh, 7-0 defeat to Germany. It was a tough L out. And what was the morale like after the Germany game when you realised that you had actually qualified for the quarterfinals and you were playing England a few days later? Well, to be honest, I didn't know whether to laugh or cry, to be honest with you. <laughs> Don't blame it. It was ridiculous. Um, I'm thinking, oh yeah, we're going home now, especially after losing 7-0, it's, it's yeah. a bad way to finish the, the season, you know, and then we heard the fans singing, uh, oh, we're not going home, yeah. so we're thinking, what are they saying, what are you, what are you doing, <laughs> and then uh, the gaffer turns around and says, oh yeah, we've qualified, so of course you're going to be booze, we're the first team in 20 years to qualify for the quarter funds of the European Championships, and yeah. then um, obviously we had to get ourselves back together and regroup for England, and yeah, really enjoyed did it. You find, did you find the fans helped you kind of with the buzz of them singing and chatting there? Would you? Yeah, of course. It's it it makes more professional, you know, in a professional environment. Mm. Just the fans singing and getting yeah. us going, you know, yeah. really good. And then um, that Germany team as well. Before the tournament started, they were like highly touted as probably the favourites for the tournament. And we all know German football kind of churns out players from underage setup. Their underage setup is outstanding. And um, what was it like to go up against a group of players who just they do look like they're playing under twenty one. They're under twenty ones players playing under seventeen level sometimes. Germany are ridiculous, and yeah. you can see it from. In, we stayed in the same hotel as them, and they had their own chef, believe it or not. Yeah, the <laughs> professional setups, unbelievable. It showed against us. It was yeah. like men against boys out there, and you know we we'll learn from it. It's, uh, overall, it's a yeah. learning experience, isn't it? So I we'll learned from a lot, and Germany are smashing so and yeah. they were lucky not to be Spain in the semi final. Yeah. yeah, well, we'll move off. The Germans now. We get on to the to the England game. How 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 proud of you of a, of a group where he's like losing narrowly one 0 to an England side in in that quarter final game? Yeah, well, Ireland and England, of course, it's it's a yeah. big game, you know. And after the Germany game, we tried to regroup ourselves. And against England, I I felt we were unlucky. Yeah. We we sat back off them, and I was marking the kid that plays for City, Jaden Sancho, and. Yeah. he's ridiculous he's outstanding probably one of the best players I've ever seen overall that England team were amazing they're playing the final tonight yeah, the yeah. Final. and uh, it, was, it was very good though it was a great learning experience as I said and you know I learned a lot from playing against yeah. England and on a personal level is, is, the, is the next goal to break into the under 19 squad now yeah Going of course forward. at the minute I'm, I'm really focused on Pats St. Pats Athletic at the minute so overall my main aim is to play in the first team of course yeah. but the reason yeah, aim is to play in the and they only team. missed out the Euros through a uh, goal, goal difference there themselves. Yeah, goal difference yeah, very lucky for it. Um, and then with yourself, obviously you just mentioned Pats there, you moved up to the under-19s now, but obviously in the 17s before that. Um, recently in Ireland we brought in the under-19s league and then the under-17s league and now we've gone 15s and 13s as well, which are all nationalised. Does that kind of help players like yourself to kind of, when you move into that Ireland camp at under-17s level, does it feel... A little bit less of a jump up when you've been playing kind of national level and been in a professional football club of sorts, rather than kind of jumping from schoolboys to playing. Obviously, your Germany's and your England too, as you say, players like who play for Manchester City and um, 
with Germany, like Bayern Munich and the likes of that, players who are in that academy all day, like hot hours, the educated there and everything. Absolutely, it helps you because at the end of the day, when you're in school by football, it's all about sort of winning and that. Yeah. Whereas you go to the likes of St. Pat's, Rovers, Yabos. Yeah. It's it's concentrate more on the players and it's professional coaches of course. Whereas yeah. schoolboy football, you don't get as professionally coached as you do. But overall, it's been great. Like it's helped the league. Usually, people at the age of sixteen, they think if they don't go to England, I'm finished here. Yeah. I'm not gonna make as a footballer now. As you can see, the league ones helping players go to England. The likes of Daryl Horgan, prime example. He's playing championship week in week out now, and he's a running amok. A lot of those players that went to the to the. Uh, to the Euros there with Ireland where a lot of them you, you remember the the picture of them all with their League of Ireland shirts a lot of them like Coleman McLean Shane Long yeah. and many more Absolutely. Uh, Stephen Ward and that. League of Ones it's a pathway I personally think to England yeah. and the 70s and 90s is just going to help it I think it can be it can still be improved you know nothing's perfect but it's getting there and it, football's really really going well at the minute in the country yeah and then kind of Pats and just ask quickly on Pats as well they've kind of brought in and J.R. Bryan was talking about on LOI Weekly and stuff about um, the fact that they're setting up a, or have set up a scholarship system with NUI Minute as well to try and get some players an education before they go over. And J.R. used the example of Jay Carroll, who was obviously at Pats, he now plays for Cambridge, but got his move to Huddersfield after he'd finished his degree. Is that something that you look at as maybe important for some players, probably not for everyone, but some players to get maybe a degree and stay in Ireland a couple of years longer? And to have that kind of system in place through the football clubs where you're not having to just try and go after it yourself while also trying to break your way into like a Pats first thing. Yeah, of course. For me, education is important and it's important to me family. Like I really want to yeah. do well in the in the skills system. Yeah. So personally, I could break my leg tomorrow, touch what I don't anyway. Yeah. But you can break your leg and you really do need something behind you. Something to fall back on. Absolutely. Yeah. So a leaving, leaving certificate and then maybe moving on to college, whatever you're into, can help you. Do that if you're if you're into it, you know. What I mean, another yeah. example is uh, Conor O'Malley plays for the first team. Yeah, he was, in, he was in Minute as well. Yeah, and Darren Markey, all St. Pat's first team players, and they're doing really well for themselves. Yeah, so it's a good little system, and it helps. It they help train as well. It's professionally run as well. Yeah. Okay, and finally, what what would your message be to, to younger f- uh, footballers making their way up to get to the level that you're at now? For me, it's just really work hard. It's down to if you're dedicated, you you'll do something. In life, that's in life. It's just not just not just in football. And if you get knocked down, just keep getting back up and keep working hard, and hopefully you'll do all right. Yeah. Well, Luke, best of luck going forward. Hopefully, thanks very much for coming on the show. Cheers. Thank you. Soon enough, and we see you playing on TV, and hopefully in a green shirt one yeah. day. Don't forget to check them out on uh, social media. Thanks very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV. Have a great weekend.